in this episode. I finally get registration. A swap happens. And I decide to... I'm Andrew Cynthia White. And I decide... Join me as I share my passion. And I... These videos are made possible by contributions from Patreons. You don't have the best two-person overland vehicle in the world. I do. I'd better dispose of this more responsibly. So as you can see, it's pretty much finished. And there it is. So let's take a look at it. So this video is going to be quite uncomfortable for me, because I forgot my camp chair. Anyway. What this is, is yet another V8 4.5 litre diesel Land Cruiser. But this time, it's a 78 series. So firstly, this is the result of a build series. And if you haven't watched it yet, then you're cheating, and you should go and watch it right now. Click that little clicky thing to see it. So now that that's out of the way... Let me show you its features! So on the front, as you can see, I've got an ARB bar. I chose this because it's lightweight. Don't be silly, it's a troop carrier. It'll never be lightweight. I chose this because it was already on the car when I got it. As well as these spotlights. But I think they're quite good. Although the only thing I'd change about it is that it doesn't have a winch. Now some of you might call me out for contradicting myself. Because in a previous video, I mentioned that I think every car should have a winch. But this one doesn't because I haven't put one on yet. So this is the engine. It's just like any other one. And all I've added is a catch can. Now I purposely haven't added a secondary fuel filter because I don't think they have all the advantages people say they do. So my compromise is to replace my fuel filters more regularly, but this one stays as is. In the future, if I decide that I hate money, I might end up getting a new clutch and a tune on it, as well as an EGR delete. So as you can probably see, it's not sitting at standard height, and this is because it's got a 2 inch lift, as well as 285 tyres. Now the problem with this is that the previous owner put some offset rims on it, which meant that my front tires stuck out like a sore thumb. So that's what this horrible thing is for. I got a blue slip yesterday. Now the back of the car is where things get slightly more interesting. And by interesting, I mean weird. Starting with this thing. So this little plate is a hub that I made so that I've got easy access to my airlines and gas pipe work. Spoiler alert, there's a compressor mounted inside. There's also a gas inlet for what we're going to talk about soon. Now the other good thing about this is that it doesn't protrude past the bodywork like you see on all the other vent kits by other companies. Now this one's just a prototype, but I'll be working on a much better one that I'll actually be able to sell in the near future. I also have a weird box on the back. Now on this side, I keep my gas bottles, which feed to that hub we just talked about. And in the other side is a shower system, because this is a glamping vehicle after all. I also have a high lift jack because I hate my fingers, 
and a tiny shovel for poos. So there's nothing really on this side, but I'm just going to talk about the paintwork. Now this is Raptor liner paint, and as you might know if you've watched the other videos, I did a collaboration with these guys to respray it, and I think they've done quite a good job. So when these guys did the paint, they painted it with a slightly higher pressure than normal, and what this does is give you a smoother finish. But because they've done this a few times, they managed to get it extremely consistent, which is why I wanted them to do it instead of me. The other things they did were add little details that nobody would think of that I think are bloody fantastic. So that's just about everything to do with the outside of the car, except the roof rack. There it is. So let's take a look at the inside, because that's a little bit more interesting. So what we've got here is what looks like your standard troopy setup. On this side is a floor sofa, and these fold out. Now that gives you your sleeping space. But what's this? Well, it's an oven, because this is a glamping vehicle, and everyone needs roast dinners on a Sunday. So what we've got is this oven. Next to that is a little kitchen thing with a sink and a water tank. This one's for drinking water only, and it's got a little 10 litre tank in behind there. Now the drain for this is just behind here. You probably can't see it. But it comes out just in front of the rear diff. And next to that is a fridge. Let's look at it from the other side. So this is the cheapest, smallest brass monkey fridge that I was able to find, which just so happens to fit perfectly in here. It's also really good, so don't let the price fool you. But what's this? So I've decided to take this inside, because somehow, on a day like this, it's now raining. So what you can see here are various controls for things. This is the light switch, for the interior lights. These are the controls for the bed thing, which we're going to get to later. This is a 240 volt power socket, powered by this inverter, which I'll show you in a minute. And that's about it, because that's already too many controls. So I built this car as a weekend overland vehicle, that I can go on further away trips if I wanted to. But I also hated what I saw on other troop carrier builds, namely having to assemble your furniture if you wanted a table or a bed. So here's what I came up with. Pretty cool, right? Now what this means is that when I'm traveling, I can eat dinner like a civilized person but it also means that I can go on trips while I'm supposed to be working. So this, combined with my 12 volt setup, will allow me to stay pretty off grid. So let's take a look at that setup. So I originally designed this bed table thing to fold away the sofa beds as well. And while it works, it seems like it's almost gonna tear itself apart. So here's a look at that and you might see the reason why I don't want to use it like that. So for now, I'll just use it while the beds are folded. So I just remembered to show you the 12 volt setup. I have to raise the table again. But anyway, the 12 volt stuff is under here. Now under there is a load of 12 volt fuses and a 1000 watt inverter that feeds to that other control panel that we talked about earlier. Now to the left of that, in here, is the deep cycle battery and that's fed from the engine bay. Find out more about that in my previous video about 12 volt stuff. 
I forgot to mention anything about the driver's interior, but as you can see, as it's the older model V8, it's still got the steel dashboard. But what I've got here is a single bin Android head unit, which fits in there pretty nicely. And below that is a GME 40 channel. But apart from that, in this area, rather than modifying everything, I've chosen to make it pretty tidy. I guess the last thing to mention of any merit is the reverse camera here. And that doubles as a rear view mirror. And while you might think it's useless to have it on all the time, it's surprisingly useful. Now I have overlooked one thing that you may or may not have noticed. Troop carriers do not typically have three passenger doors. This one does. And at that, you found pretty much the main reason why I bought this thing. Anyway. I forgot to mention that I've also got a Kmart rear bar strapped to the back of this thing. But you've already seen that. But that's what brand it is. I sell those. Now there are a few other things that are going to be happening in the future. One of them is a water heater. But it's not your average one. Now this monstrosity is hopefully going to be an inline water heater. This is just a series of half inch 90 degree fittings with glow plugs in them. Now the theory is you heat the glow plugs which then heat the water as it flows through. The water is going to feed in this end with a pump and hopefully come out here not cold anymore. Now to be honest, I'm not expecting this to work particularly well. I'm not expecting burn yourself hot water to come out of it, more along the lines of something that isn't completely cold. Now each of these glow plugs draws about 12 amps of power, and the goal is to run it through a relay which is activated by the accessories port, meaning you'll only be able to heat the water while the engine's running. Now seeing as you've watched my other videos, and you're all now electrical engineers because you know this, you'll know that 12 times 8 is this, and that's how much power this thing alone is going to draw. Now what you'll find if you search for glow plug water heater on YouTube are a lot of people with many syllable names trying to heat a bucket of water with a single glow plug and then saying it doesn't work. But the fact of the matter is, if you apply more energy to water than is lost, then the water will in theory heat up. So once I finish putting this setup together, I'll be testing it out and seeing if it works. So that pretty much concludes the troopy. So what I'm gonna do is go and drive the thing instead of making little YouTube videos that are embarrassing to do in public. And as I'm in Arumba State Rubbish Tip, it seems like I'm in the perfect place to do it.